HQ 100.9 FM, because we are Crescent Hill Radio, and it's very exciting to be Crescent Hill Radio, because today I have not only had a great animal photographer, Vivian Knox Thompson, on with me, and I not only have a great homegrown radio hour tonight with Vatican Bank's Dan Cannon, who's coming in solo because we like his sound and we just didn't invite the rest of the band, but I also this hour have a fabulous guest who happens to have greeted the Derby winner at the finish line for the network, and uh, she's quite a horsewoman herself. Donna Brothers is in the house. Hey, Donna. Hey, Tara. (laughs) What's it like to interview that guy when the the adrenaline is probably out of this world, popping off of him, and what's it like to interview him as soon as he crosses the finish line? Um, Well, let me start by saying this. As as you've already introduced me, my background is in horse racing. And so a lot of these people that I interview, I've ridden with. And I don't have any animosity with any of the jockeys in the jocks room. I mean, we we all get along fine. Right. But I can't say that I've, like, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of all of them, right? Like, I know (laughs) them. So I can't just be like, oh, they're all my favorites. There's some of them who I like more than others. Of course. But here's the thing. When they win a race like the Derby, the Preakness, or the Belmont Stakes, or one of the Breeders' Cup races that I interview them for, the energy that they have coming out of their body, that aura of, of three feet around them, is so um, so energetic, so electric. Intense. That it touches you, right? Yeah. So like, it doesn't matter whether I'm a huge fan of theirs or not. Right. It doesn't even matter if I know them very well. I am instantly so happy for them because they're so happy that that energy is just electric and it, it's contagious. And so I am happy for them. And even from a journalistic standpoint where I'm not supposed to have any emotion, their emotion is so strong that yeah. you can't help but to feel their emotion. So what was it like on uh, Saturday? Well, Mario Gutierrez is a, uh, he's, he's somewhat introverted and he's really a pretty cool kid. And you're, he's young, isn't he? Yeah, he's only 20. Yeah. Uh, I think he's 27. Yeah. But he won four years ago, and I'll have another. Yes. And he was pretty cool then, too. But I think he was a bit more cavalier then mm-hmm. because I think, you know, he's from Mexico originally. Right. He moved to Canada in 2009 and then came down to the um, California, right. Southern California, uh, shortly thereafter. And, um, yeah, he didn't – I don't think in 2012 he really understood – uh, the, you know, what he had just done. I don't think means. he understood the monumental um, effect of winning the Kentucky Derby. Right. And then he had a slump the next year and then a bigger slump the next year. So the following year, in t- 2013, he won 100 and some races. In 2014, he won 61 races. So his career really started to tail off. And uh, I don't know how much time we have to go into Plenty. his resurgence. But, well... The gal who picked him up from the airport when he went from Canada, I mean, from Mexico to Canada, was a girl named Rebecca. She was a fairly young girl at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was a friend of a friend's. And so he met her. They didn't date. He met her then. And then when he went back up to Hastings to start riding again in 2014, he saw Rebecca again. They started seeing each other. Now they're married. Cool. And... She got him to go to a sports psychologist because he was really struggling with confidence in in his ability to be able to get the job done. And he really credited her right after the race for, like, he said, thank God to my wife, Rebecca. Like, she really helped me. But he didn't mention the whole sports psychologist and all that. And the other thing he didn't mention is that she's pregnant. Oh, how exciting. She's expecting in four months. I don't know the exact due date, but it was an article I read a month ago where she was expecting in five months. So my math tells me four months from now, my, my simple math. You're pretty good at math, aren't Thank you? you. But we'll do a feature <laughs> story on that whole thing for the I bet. Yeah. I bet you will, which is coming up a week from Saturday, because mm-hmm. it's two weeks from the Derby to the Preakness and three weeks to the Belmont. Correct. You have a very busy schedule ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you going to do? You know what they say, what are you going to do after you finish with the Triple Crown, Donna Brothers? You're not going to Disney World. I'm not. Um, I'm going to Spain. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so, you know, Betsy's Hot Yoga here in Louisville. Yes, love she, Betsy. She started this, uh, she's got this trip, and, it, and it's like a yoga hiking trip. And I looked at the dates, and I was like, hmm, June 11th. I think I'm busy June 11th. Let me look at my calendar. And I looked and saw... Um, That's Belmont Stakes Day. But guess what? (laughs) What? It's in New York. So why can't I just fly out that night? So I fly overnight. I arrive in Spain on June 12th. So I'll be there a day late. Outstanding. Yeah, and I'll be there till uh, the 19th. Come back home. That is so much fun. 
Why so not, what right? will you be doing? Traveling around what region? That's Do you even a great know yet? question. Just anywhere you want? I have no well, idea. Well, your Donna Brothers, you can do I anything I think it's like want. Oviedo. Does oh, that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, and then we hike there. Like, I get there, and then I, I shuttle, like, 50 miles, and we're going to be in the mountains. And then we're going to do hiking and yoga every day, and then the last three days, we're in Madrid. That will be so cool. I yeah. can't wait. We're going to talk some more to Donna Brothers right after we give you a little Weber, Where the Truth Lies, on Crescent Hill Radio. This is Take It From Tara's Taking You Home Afternoon Drive with Wagon Wednesday Animal interests only. 